Good afternoon, everybody. I am Chelsea Whittington, and I'm so proud today to be representing the Northwest Indiana Biz Hub and an offshoot, a program, a, a very important initiative of the Legacy Foundation, where we take the time to highlight amazing businesses across northern Indiana. Today, I am live here at the Hammond Development Corporation in Hammond, Indiana, and I have not one, but two amazing entrepreneurs who actually reside in this building at 52 33 Holman Avenue. It's been a while since we've done some of these spotlights, so I want to welcome everybody back, and I'm so glad you're tuning in. And it's always a pleasure for me to be able to highlight fellow entrepreneurs on behalf of Legacy Foundation, Northwest Indiana Biz Hub, and just as a fellow entrepreneur. So I have to my left, Mrs. Latasha Norris of Onyx Fingerprinting, and to my right, I have Andrea Horbrook, of Courageous Spaces. Did I get that right, ladies? Yes, you got it right. Yay, Hello. Chelsea. Hello. So, let me start off by having the two of you introduce yourselves and give me the elevator speech of your amazing brands. Tasha. All right, I guess I start this off. My name is Latasha Norris. I'm the owner and operator of Onyx Fingerprinting and Lab Services, located right here in the HDC building. We do drug and alcohol testing, we do digital fingerprinting background checks, and we also do DNA testing. All right, so she's one of those where sometimes you're happy to see her coming, sometimes not. <laughs> it may mean, yes, new employment, or, oh no, I've been in an accident and they were getting ready to do a background drug <laughs> test on me to make sure I was right. But you know, your services are definitely needed, and we'll talk more about the glass ceilings that you're breaking, mm -hmm. obviously being a women-owned, black-owned business here in Northwest Indiana. Yes. Congratulations, Thank Tosh. You. Andrea, I have just made the just introduction with you recently off camera. It's such a delight to meet you, you, and I'm excited to hear all about Courageous Spaces and how you got that name. Right. So um, my name is Andrea Horberg walton I am a licensed clinical therapist in the state of Illinois as well as Indiana. I have about 10 plus years of experience. And basically, I help individuals live full. Mm. And full stands for fully present, unbothered, living and loving courageously as the name Courageous Spaces. So my name basically means courageous. So if you Google me, Google Andrea, you'll see the name say bravery and therefore courageous is synonym. I love that. But I'm back to the letter U. Unbothered. <laughs> I love that. I feel right. like I kind of entered that when I entered my 50s. I'm so unbothered. I so it. I feel like I'm in the right place. You're in the game. So this question will be for both of you and I'm going right. to start with you. Entrepreneurship, scary word. What made you step out on your own versus, hey, I'm just going to work for Franciscan or I'm going to work for this medical company. No, you are you, stand alone. How did you get there? Right, so I understand the power of ownership and being able to make your mark and have legacies for a gen generational wealth for your family. So my son, he struggled with ADHD. And as a parent, I needed to show up for other parents so that they can be seen, supported, and understood. Yes. So that's how Courageous Spaces were birthed. It was birthed out of a need mm. for mental health services for the parents of children with neurodiverse autism, ADHD uh, conditions. Thank you. It's nothing better than to be able to enlist the services of someone who understands. Yes. Versus, I learned it in the textbook and my degree on the wall says that I for can sure. do this. For how sure. is your son? Uh, so he is great. He is currently 14 years old. Okay. So it's been a long journey. Um, and he has excelled and overcame so many challenges. And I love being able to show up for schools and, and just teach them different methods to help, you know, impact the youth of this generation to come. Well, he has an amazing mom <laughs> to do you. that for him and stand in the gap. Yes. Now, Miss Tasha, you and I have had several conversations. Mm -hmm. And let's just be transparent. We totally went to high school together. Yes. Okay. Junior high. Junior high. <laughs> high school. All of that good Long stuff. Time. But I have watched you grow over the years, first being in a traditional corporate job mm -hmm. and working in the industry. And then not too long ago, you too stepped out on faith. Yes. Tell them the story of how Onyx was born. So Onyx was actually born out of COVID. Okay. Um, I worked in corporate America for over 20 years. And I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm. Um, it's a glass ceiling there, mm -hmm. right? You know, as much as hard as you work, at some point it just stops. Mm -hmm. And so I decided one day that if I could work as hard for myself, Ooh. 
as I worked and the time that I put in for someone else, then I wanted to step out. So that's how I ended up stepping out into the entrepreneur world. I felt like I show up every day. Um, you know, and it's different when you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because there is not anyone to answer to, mm -hmm. right? There's no boss. There's nobody to say, well, you know, if you don't show up, this is going to happen. But for all of those 20 years that I did that and showed up, I said, if I put this much fortitude into my own, then the sky's the limit for me. It's and I won't beautiful. have to wait, you know, like, oh, it's your annual. Well, you know what? You're capped out. Mm -hmm. I'm not capped out. Oh, I love it. She is not capped out. She can make as much as she wants. Right. And part of that is what I love about Northwest Indiana Biz Hub is that they provide a platform for entrepreneurs to network, to get resources, to do spotlights like these so that we as consumers know about the products and services that you're offering. I'm coming back to you, Tasha. Fingerprinting, background checks, DNAs. I'm sure there was some type of training certification. Y'all can't just be like, here, let no. me draw some blood. No, it is not. <laughs> so I have national certifications. Um, last year when you spotlighted me, I went to the the big expo that we have. I'm going back again to Dallas this year. Okay, it was in Las Vegas. It was in Las so Vegas. Trying to last... figure out how she focused, but okay, <laughs> Las Vegas. It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> but this year is in Dallas, and so we get I get nationally certified to do Department of Transportation drug tests, to do Department of Transportation alcohol tests. So there are certifications that my assistant as well as myself that we have to go through to be able to do those tests. Okay. Because we, we test truck drivers mm -hmm. we test pilot i go to the airport i test pilots wow. right you know so those people and i take this extremely serious yes. when it becomes the drug and alcohol testing for the department of transportation because that's our family member yes that's your family or my family that being gets transported that yes you know that's your family or my family that's on the road when the truckers are on the road. So yes. we are certified. I love it. So if you're that. just tuning in, where have you been? Northwest Indiana Biz Hub is spotlighting businesses all across Northern Indiana. And today we are so fortunate to be here at the Hammond Development Corporation, 5233 Holman Avenue. Why do I know that address so well? I'm so glad you asked. My office is also located right here in this building. And I want to give a shout out to HDC for being so accommodating to its tenants, to presenting so many programs for entrepreneurs, training and resources. So it's like being connected with Northwest Indiana Biz Hub and then having HDC, it all makes sense because we as entrepreneurs definitely need those contacts and networking. I'm coming back over to you regarding your educational standpoint of this. Obviously, you just can't come in and start counseling me. <laughs> so where did you go to school and get your certification? Great. So I started at Trinity Christian College in psychology. And then from psychology, I minored in special education because mm -hmm. I work with parents of children with ADHD, autism. Um, and then I went to pursue my master's um, at Chicago State University in clinical mental health counseling. Okay. And then from there, I set for my, um, you know, my LTPC. That's the current license that I have as well as the my LMHC, which is the license in Indiana. You get so technical, yes. okay? But the moral of the story is I did a lot of schooling. I even went to pursue my PhD um, at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology, but after uh, three years, I had to pause my program mm -hmm. because I got pregnant, okay. and um, we were just like, hey, we're gonna wait on that. So uh -huh. I went all the way to dissertation proposal, okay. and then we stopped. Okay. So where we are now is that it does take a lot of schooling, but if you want to get your uh, masters or go and become a counselor, it is definitely possible and doable. I can also support you if you need help. Oh, I love that. And that's what we as entrepreneurs yes. do. We offer resources to help one another. So this is a question that's coming to both of you. Mm -hmm. Tasha, as a female mm -hmm. entrepreneur, name a roadblock or two. And don't tell me you didn't have any. <laughs> well, no, there are roadblocks. And one of the biggest roadblocks for me is getting in a space where you already have larger corporations that's out there. Okay. Right? So I, I always coin myself as a little fish. Mm -hmm. um, when people think about, oh, I need to go take a drug test, they'll automatically think of a Quest. Mm -hmm. they automatically think of a lab court. They won't think of a small business. Yes. So part of my 2024 initiative was to go to different things and to be able to sit on a platform like this 
so that people know that I exist. Yes. Um, before we got on the on the camera, I was telling you about the awesome opportunity that I got with the Urban League, mm -hmm. right? I, so I did like one one or two background checks for Miss Vanessa at the beginning of last year. Mm -hmm. They got this big program that they got going and who does she think of? Of course. Right, so I that was so exciting yes. for me to be able to have networked with her previously, but then when she got this bigger job that she needed to mm -hmm. have done, she immediately reached out. And you know I will speak to that, Tasha, as far as reputation management, mm -hmm. right? Sure. You take the smallest job, mm -hmm. the little fish job, mm -hmm. if you will, and you do it to death, right? Exactly. You do it, you execute as if it were the biggest mm -hmm. job you've you ever, ever gotten, managed. and I promise. Yeah. It comes full circle yeah. because they remember the efforts sure. that you put into it. Roblox, anyone? Oh, <laughs> I don't even think we have time. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, so I guess the biggest roadblock would be boundaries and business. So many times as entrepreneurs, we talk about having a business plan, yes. but no one specifically talks about having a mental health plan for mm -hmm. your business and what that looks like. Ooh. Because you will come against areas where you feel defeated. You will come against areas where you don't have the financing or where you feel like it's not a nine to five it's literally a nine to nine mm -hmm. and it's just like okay where are those boundaries when I get in business and what does that look like for my mental health so that I don't end up in having a complicated depression or overwhelming anxiety so roadblock would potentially be making sure you have boundaries as you go forward and excel in your business because the two have to be able to collide in order to be successful oh my goodness let me know if well you can help with that yeah i was going to say <laughs> now for business owners um yeah. supervisors ceos who will yes. see this video yes. do you set up trainings yes. or help them implement mental health programs in their organization yes for sure if you do if you need that assistance please reach out to our i can give you guys the information afterwards yes. i know we're we'll going to go post it that. in the comments as yes. well because i'm sitting here thinking there are probably some HR departments right now like I never even thought of just implementing the whole program like they may have resources to say here call this EAP mm -hmm. number or hey take a mental health day but it's I'm hearing from you that there's more so much more that will complement not only us as entrepreneurs but our nine to fivers yes. and let me balance this out before I walk into my boss's office oh. and say I'm over it. I'm, I'm not coming back. You know, yes. we get that way sometimes. Yeah, and as entrepreneurs, we really get that way. Like, what yeah. have I done? I have stepped out and now it's just me today. And, yes. mm -hmm. you know, I might have an assistant or not. We have to see because we own the keys. Mm -hmm. yes. So when you stepped out, what were some of the first things that you did? I know you got office space, but what were some of the other things as an entrepreneur that you did? Well, in, in, in the business aspect, because mm -hmm. I always say I didn't grow in this business, and it goes back to, you said, the education. I made sure that I knew everything that I could about this space. Okay. Because education is key. Yes. Right? Um, I didn't want to be into this and people start asking me questions, or and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right? It was It's different from a business that you grow in, and this business was kind of introduced to me. Okay. So... Education was the biggest thing for me, okay. was to, to be armed. Also, I didn't really understand my journey in corporate America, mm -hmm. but it paid off, right? Um, you know, being a manager, and we used to talk about, you know, the bottom line, your books is important. Yes. Um, because sometimes you're good at what you do, but you forget about the back end stuff. Mm -hmm. So those things actually came full circle to me I was able to understand, oh, I already know about that. Mm -hmm. I already know about, you know, EBITDA and, you know, different stuff that we would talk about. And now you're applying it to your now own applying business. It. And so I actually had to go back to some of my prior managers and say, that felt like such a daunting task, but it makes so much yes, sense. sense now. Because like I said, the, if you don't have the books and the back end in order, that's sometimes where entrepreneurs fall short. Yes. Because they open business because they're good at what they do. Right. But then they, so much more to there's it. so much more to it. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Chime in and talk sure. to me about your operations because obviously you're a great psychologist, great counselor, convener, but yeah. then there's the business. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so for me, the biggest thing has been connection and collaboration. Okay. I am not too prideful to say, hey, I need help. I, I like individuals who have more experience and have established practice. Like this morning, I was emailing somebody saying, you know what? You have an established practice. You, you're, you're where I am. You're where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So basically, I emailed, I reached out, and they basically said, yeah, I'll help you. I'll support you. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think the golden ticket is, is even in this entrepreneurial journey, making sure you're always staying abreast on like what is new and what is developing and having that connection and collaboration, not being afraid to say, hey, you know, let's mm -hmm. exchange services. How can we work together to go ahead and build? What great advice you are giving our entrepreneurs. And always remember, there's somebody watching on the fence like, this was the confirmation I needed. I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and start my business. Mm -hmm. Now, talk about your team. I heard you say you have an assistant. I and did. what is that like? As you see yourself trying to scale up, where are the challenges and wins when we talk about the workforce? And then I'll say that to you as well for upscale. So I started off with just me, mm -hmm. right? It was just only me. Um, but again, with resources, I, um, had an introduction with workforce, work, work one, with workforce work one. development, okay. workforce development, and they assisted me with um, the help of getting an assistant. Okay, right? so thanks, work one. Work one, yes, yeah, shout okay. out to work one because they were phenomenal in helping me to cross that journey to okay. be able to get an assistant. And when she came in, um, she she came in to assist me. But she got in, she liked it so much. Again, there was another collab and partner with Work One. She got a phlebotomy. She took, because we she had got license. <laughs> she got license in phlebotomy. And so now she is the full picture. Yes. She has a license because we were contracting out that for service. our blood draw, gotcha. that service. But she came and, you know, with talking to Work One and the people at Work One, we found out that there was a program that would assist her and pay for her to go and get her phlebotomy license. What a win-win yeah, so circumstance. That was a, yeah, win-win okay. circumstance. And now, you know, we're getting busier that I'm thinking about, well, do I need to go back in, tap back into that and maybe acquire another assistant? Okay. So business is, you know, in the two years that we've been open, it is climbing. Yes. It is progressively climbing. So now you said you had 10 years experience. How long have you been in this building? And what what do we have on the horizon for your expansion? Because I claim that for every business yes. owner and that I, I connect. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. I was actually just reflecting as you were talking that I remember taking a picture of my keys. Um, you know, Me too. getting, yep, yeah, I just took a picture of my keys last year. So actually, this will be year two mm -hmm. um, in June. So we actually, we just came on our two year anniversary. So as far as it's expanding, I am looking to start um, a mentorship program as well as a collaboration with um, like local, um, you know, uh, what is it called? Partners? Yes, local partners just to do training and development. Okay. That's organizations. What I'm yep, organizations yes. to do training and development. So that's the desire as I expand and grow. We actually just brung, uh, brung on an intern. Okay. Um, I took your advice, you know, find some interns. And I yes. Found intern interns who, are the best. There's yes. one behind this camera doing <laughs> yes. amazing work yes. right yes. now. And I, I, I'm just actually on the process of onboarding her. So I really appreciate the support. Okay. So that's where we are. That's um, great. Yeah. Well, as we get ready to wrap up this conversation, I certainly want you again to express your website, yes. how we can find you, because you would be amazed the network that the Legacy Foundation has, Northwest Indiana Biz Hub, where entrepreneurs are chomping at the bit to get this type of information and their opportunities. I've heard the word collaboration quite a few mm -hmm. times. How do we find Onyx fingerprinting? Right, so you can find Onyx here at the Hammond Development Corporation at 5233 Holman Avenue. We're in Suite 101. We also have a website, which is www.onyxfingerprinting.com. Um, we're on social media. We're on Facebook as Onyx Fingerprinting. And I will just encourage you, for those of you who are in those HR spaces or you have large amounts of employers, employees who need to do background checks and, and have blood drawn for various reasons, whether it's a new job or a test that's now required, mm -hmm. random drug testing, Forget about the big players in the game. We have someone local. We have a Hoosier right here in Northwest Indiana who can get that done in 
Natasha Norris. Now, Miss Horbrook. Yes. I heard you say Horbrook Walton. Yes. Pardon me, Mr. Walton, for <laughs> dropping that name because I know we hear about it later in other spaces. We do. <laughs> so Courageous Spaces, yes. talk to me about how we can find you, your contact information, and how you're ready to help. Right, so we are licensed, or we are paneled with um, Aetna, as well as United and Blue Cross Blue Shields. So if you have um, insurances, and actually self-pay as well, we do sliding scales. So if you are looking for individuals to partner with you in your mental health journey, you can reach out to courageforwellness.com. And we can go, we have a convenient scheduling right there on our website. Again, that's courageforwellness.com, as well as all social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram, um, uh, Courageous Spaces Counseling and Consulting. Well, ladies, I can't thank you enough. I also want to thank Donna Catalano over at Legacy Foundation, overseeing Northwest Indiana Biz Hub. What an amazing program. What amazing women you are. I wish you nothing but success, prosperity, and to continue to make an amazing impact on the communities we serve. You've been watching a business spotlight with Northwest Indiana Biz Hub. I'm Chelsea Whittington of Seawit PR. Please share this video and for you future entrepreneurs out there, the promise awaits. Yes, what are you going to do? It's time to act now. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.